Are you tired of your Valorant performance feeling like a crazy roller coaster ride? One game you're on fire and the next you're struggling to have impact. You're not alone, and that's something that I've heard from thousands of students. But don't worry, because I have good news. Consistency is actually something you can tackle quite well, as long as you have the right approach. So in this video, I'll be sharing the four techniques, pros, and top-level radiance utilize to be more consistent, enabling them to reach the top of the leaderboards every single act. And real quick before the video, if your rank is below Radiant and you want to consistently win your games, I have a crazy offer for you. My team of Radiant coaches and I can help you with our eight-week premium coaching program that offers a 500 RR rank up guarantee or your money back. That's right. If you don't see results with our coaching, you don't pay. Some of our coaches include Milan, who was the analyst on Ascend when they won champs in 2021, and Screwface, who was a sixth man on EG when they won champs in 2023. To find out more and to see if we'd be a good fit, use the link in the description below to book a free strategy call. Hurry, because all 50 spots filled up for our previous season, and we've just opened up 50 more spots. Imagine you're holding down Sunset's B site. Your Cypher setup is in pristine condition and it's all looking good. Then suddenly a KO knife comes in, flashes are going out, and almost out of nowhere, you're getting trampled like Mufasa from The Lion King. Now, where did you go wrong and how do you fix it? Well, it's most likely that you're missing protocols. Protocols are the bread and butter of any good Valorant player, and they become even more critical when you want to go pro or join a team. So what are they and how do you use them? A good way to think of protocols is as preset plans or rules you abide by while playing. So let's go back and imagine that we're playing Cypher. You can try to think of a good setup at the start of every single round and mix it up to be unpredictable. But if you do that, you'll likely make mistakes and eventually lose a round because of them. So it's better to prepare for situations you commonly encounter and have different strategies available. Often, I see Cypher players have a favorite setup that they always use at the start of every game. This isn't terrible per se, but things can quickly go wrong if you fail to consider what agents you're playing against. When you see a KO on the enemy team, you should immediately realize how that will change your plans. In other words, don't be the average Cypher player who gets KO knifed and then loses that round first before starting to adapt. Make it a protocol instead. At the start of each game, you should immediately check what agents you're up against. So if you see a KO, you immediately know what things to watch out for and what setup you'll be using. This achieves a few things. First, you don't have to end up losing a round that was easily avoidable. Second, you no longer need to think of a good setup in the 10, 15 seconds or so you have at the start of each round before you need to start placing trips. And third, it frees up your headspace to think about other more important things that you simply cannot or haven't yet planned out. Of course, protocols don't solely apply to the Cypher versus KO knife matchup. You can also consider how to place your trips against a Dogging Sky, a Killjoy Ultimate, or KO ult that disables your trips if you play close to them, but won't if you leave them for your teammates while you chill on the other side of the map. Protocols also don't have to be agent specific. They can be about where you plant, who goes in first, how you approach a retake, and much more. Even for agents like Jet, who may not seem very preparation based, protocols can actually be extremely valuable. For example, after walking into B main on ascent and the enemy Sova drones into the main, what do you do? If you try to answer that question in a split second, you're gonna end up dead. Instead, if you already have a protocol, you can either immediately run out, or if you're feeling aggressive, hide from it in the cubby while you prepare a dash, then peek out as soon as your dash is ready so that you can kill one and get out. Next, what if you get omen flashed? Here again, if you don't have an answer ready within half a second, you're probably already too late. However, if you have a protocol for that scenario, you would likely plan out your play with a potential omen flash in mind. That way you can just move a bit further left while your dash readies so that no one can peek you full blind and then get out of main by pressing E and D at the same time. To summarize this first point, you wanna develop protocols for all scenarios you can think of and continually expand upon them. If a protocol fails, reflect on it and see if there's anything you should change. Of course, pure game sense comes with time, but you can shortcut a lot of the decision-making process by just having good protocols. Now, that being said, just having the right protocols in place does not necessarily guarantee that you'll be invincible to off days. You might still be missing a crucial element, a proper A, B, and C game, as that ensures you have something to fall back on when you're having a bad day and even helps you increase your impact and creativity when you're already performing well. So what's an ABC game, you ask? Well, it starts with recognizing that your performance 
is range based instead of static. I'm sure you remember some of your best games and perhaps even how you felt during them. But if you've played more than a few hours of Valorant, you probably also realize that you won't always perform at that level. And that's okay. You just got to learn how to deal with it. The worst thing you can do when you're having a bad day, which also happens to be the thing I see players do most often, is trying to force yourself to play at your best regardless. To be honest, that often just isn't possible, leading to frustration and often even worse performances. Most players have a similar top end of the range, even when you think about pros. I mean, think of a player like Angel. He's not exactly known for consistently dominating the server, but that doesn't mean he doesn't have some insane performances or rounds. So here, the lower end of his range sets Angel apart from other pros like Demon 1. And it's the same for anyone. As soon as you get past a rank like Diamond, games are often pretty equal in that anyone could outperform anyone on any given day. Sure, an immortal smurf could pop up in the lobby, but if the immortal player is having an off day and one of the diamonds is performing at their top level, the game might just be up for grabs. So even though your best, aka your A game, might be the most appealing thing to work on, you should actually spend a lot more time focusing on your bad days or your C games if you're looking to be consistent. So how do you do that? Watching back your games, maybe even with a coach, is a great way to get started. Looking back at your game, you can take note of the kind of mistakes you make when you're at your worst, and once you're aware of them, you can take steps to avoid these mistakes when you're playing the game. Just to give you an example, I mentioned that many people like to force their best performance when they're playing their worst. And this can often lead to things like dry peeking bad angles, overextending your positioning, and other dumb plays that you know are not smart, but you're doing them anyway because you're in a bad space. Just knowing that dry peeking the jet with an operator while you're having a bad game isn't enough. I'm sure deep down, you know, there's a better way to deal with that op, especially if you spent the last 20 minutes of the game whiffing every single shot imaginable. But yet, you know, you've done it and the same goes for me. So why? Well, it's exactly like I just mentioned. We're maybe a bit upset and trying to force something that just isn't meant to be. So step one is to recognize what kind of mistakes you make when you're having a bad game and making sure you can tell when you're playing your C game. Then you need to focus on the specific mistakes you often make in your C games so that you don't run into your common pitfalls, especially since it isn't too uncommon for players to turn around their performances once they realize they're starting to play better. So when faced with a C game, you should focus on your fundamentals and think about the protocols we just discussed. For example, you can ask yourself, what kind of buy do your opponents have? Do they have a low buy? Okay, then what kind of protocol do we have for that? We stick with our team, play slowly, and ensure the enemies can't get our guns. What other tendencies do I have when I'm playing a bad game? Am I prone to start no calming? Well, maybe it's a good idea to focus on making sure that I still continue to communicate. If you're aware of what kind of game you're having, especially in the case of bad games, you can immediately recognize how that will affect your performance. That way you can focus on mitigating any weaknesses so that your worst level remains solid. Does that mean you're always going to be hyper-focused on your weaknesses? No, of course not. Because if you recognize you're on your A game, you can flip the switch and do the exact opposite. You can stop overthinking about your protocols as you're already in the zone and you just have to allow yourself to do crazy stuff, let your creativity roam free and do whatever comes to mind. If you ever notice you start overdoing things again and your performance is worsening, you can rein yourself back in and start playing more like you would normally, like any average B game. The biggest takeaway here is that you must recognize you're not a robot. Your performance is going to be a range. And if you want to improve the fastest, it's not smart to focus only on the highest end of that range. What makes the largest difference between players is actually how far their lower end makes their performance drop. Okay, before I let you go, there are a few small things I still have to go over quickly. One of them is expectations, more specifically, setting realistic ones when it comes to teammates. I know it often seems like your teammates are full-time yappers the way they're playing the game, but that's also where you kind of have to set your expectations. And I get it. For many people, having bad, toxic, or annoying teammates make them want to stop trying altogether. But if you want to be consistent, you just can't do that. Of course, if you only ever play with the same five Stack, it kind of makes sense to expect your teammates to do certain things as you build up experience together. But in solo or duo queue ranked, you have to be able to adapt to whatever circumstances you're given, and you shouldn't try to push your teammates to play a certain style, since more likely than not, they're not comfortable with it. It's essential to realize that if someone's roughly in the same rank as you, they have to have at least a couple of strengths, and they might not be the same as yours. So don't be the average toxic ranked IGL that expects everyone to play the way you want to 
to play the game. And if your style doesn't match that of your teammates, don't give up and just do your best play with the cards you're dealt with. And finally, I can't in good faith not at least mention things like tilt queuing. If you ever feel that you need to play one or a few more games to quote unquote get your RR back, it's best to just stop right there. If that's how you're thinking, you're probably about to dive into a guaranteed C game and anything you feel are hindering you from winning are going to set you right off. So unless you're trying to be a literal Minecraft creeper blowing up both your chances of winning and your mood, it's best to take a break when you clearly need one. All right, that should wrap it up. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.